them. Welcome them. Welcome. We are in New York, south of the Hampton. <laughs> We're in New York. North oh, you can't. We're in New York. We're here for Market Week. And we're here for four days and it's our first time in the showroom. We just got ready. We have a 1 p.m. appointment with the showroom for a walkthrough. I want to get breakfast and coffee and we'll circle back in a little bit. Any last words, buddy? We'll circle back in a little bit. Any good restaurants? <laughs> Leave them where? Leave them in the comments. I've seen all the uh, vloggers say that. Smash the like button, please, if you're loving this stuff. Hit it, um, subscribe. Request it. Dude, this is, I look like a, a, a torta. <laughs>
going down to breakfast because Adrian's still not ready to do a little bit of work. And then we have our first showroom appointment with Emily from Nana Porte. And then I'm meeting with a buyer from Elise Walker. Oh, the ice machine's here, it's really loud. I was also gonna ask if you guys wanted to send in maybe some questions, some business questions. I'll like post something on my stories so you guys can write questions. I'll see you at breakfast. Okay, bye. The showroom. <laughs> K pants from spring 2020, a Burberry belt, and the Lima K bodysuit. No questions asked. Holy bag. What? Cut my hair. And what? Anybody noticed? I donated 10 inches, two pigtails. Oh, you're brilliant, darling. Okay, well, I'll see you maybe at lunch, maybe after lunch. Back in the hotel, and I'm gonna take a moment to answer some of your questions, right? Correct. The other hand, what are you? What are your plans? <laughs> My plans are to relax, debrief, and reanalyze, reevaluate, reenergize, recommission, and you know, I gotta stop being a payaso. Honestly, I <laughs> joke too much. So, I'm gonna let Carla take the ropes. Oh my God. You guys ever look at the camera and just say, dude, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> or is, is that just me? Oh my gosh. I'm gonna just get out of here. Thank Please. you, buddy, for the intro. W wonderful intro. Hi, guys. Oh, the lighting's really nice right now. One second. Hello. Okay, the lighting has kind of changed a little bit. But it's okay, I'm just gonna try to answer as many of the creative uh, questions as I can. I had a few questions on the creative process. The creative part of my job is probably like 5%. Most of my days are focused on the dirty work, you know, learning to communicate more effectively, learning to manage and learning to delegate and focusing on little details, you know, why is something being returned more or why um, is a certain style being purchased more or even jump in and pack orders so I don't really have time for being creative during the um, during the week so I save that for the weekends on my day off uh, when I'm allowed to use that part of my brain to be honest being creative and coming up with designs has always been a little bit easier I design things that I know that I would wear to the airport to dinner with my husband to a meeting to an event on vacation and what I do is I will create folders so I have like a I'll show you design ideas that I jot down in my notes I don't know if you can see it, in a design folder. Basically, I'll just create like a SKU name and then I will come up with an idea. I don't sketch, I've never been good at sketching. And so I'll kind of just do a really rough sketch and then 
Brianna who works with me, she's our production coordinator slash technical designer. She'll turn it into a CAD and then we'll just modify it. I used to design before I was more selfish, I would say. It was solely designing things that I would wear. And now I design based on analytical reports of like the things that do well based on colors, based on styles, based on our demo. The two different women we, we speak to as a, as a brand. Where do I get my inspiration? My inspiration a lot of times is not necessarily a direct source of inspiration. It's not like I see something like, oh, I want to make that. A lot of times it's more of a feeling, more so of an abstract form of inspiration. Every season I'll start with colors that I'm excited about because the colors will kind of dictate the, the silhouettes. That's why a lot of times paintings inspire me. I'll even watch movies with my husband and maybe the cinematography will inspire a color palette. So that was basically the whole creative process. I wish I could say that I uh, make big mood boards and that I um, spend time really with my designs and you know feeling them. I do, I do wear them and I do test them out and, and we do bring in different models with different bodies to see how the clothes lay and how they fit and that is what I focus on more so than the sort of glamorous, creative um, aspect of it. Mostly what I really like to focus on is just getting better every season in terms of quality and construction. Even the tech packs that we create, having more information because production is a nightmare as it is and you can have a lot of miscommunication. So every season adding more information, what can I do to make it more thorough? What do you need of me so that you can do your job better? Going to the production facilities sometimes talking to the managers of these factories and getting to know them on more of a personal level because at the end of the day it's closed and I've um, made a promise to myself and to God that I would create something with what I was given and the talent I was giving was to design but at the same time I know that clothing can be a very vain the fashion industry is a very vain and superficial world so I, my goal is to be able to use that as maybe a platform to, to create jobs and ultimately to um, develop relationships with people and really focus on on what matters most which my brother has taught me which is people to learn to communicate effectively and to learn to come from a place of empathy always I've always worked alone uh, I've never actually interned anywhere I've never had a corporate job and so it's always been me working for myself so it's been a very difficult adjustment to learn the value of teamwork and learn the the power in togetherness and accomplishing a task together because you can only do so much alone and you always think like, oh, I can do it better because I know me best and that's correct. But you can go further when you go together. So that's been what's been most um, difficult is learning to be a good leader, learning the fine line of being very firm with what I want, but also learning to be kind and gentle. And I've learned the best way to do that is to be truthful. I don't want to live a life that's small and safe and easy and sometimes um, it can be overwhelming because you're, um, I don't know, there's a lot of challenges that come with just running a business as it is. And I guess um, for me, I don't mean to cry. I don't know why I'm crying. I'm very um, grateful for all of the opportunities, but I'm more grateful for the fact and that I feel as though um, I've been able to grow uh, spiritually and I've been able to grow emotionally and I've been able to grow in my character just from every day going into work and expecting to be 1% better. You know, 1% better this day, 1% better the next day and sometimes it's very exhausting and sometimes I do feel like quitting. Day, day in and day in, day out task, um, that's anyone can do that, but more so pushing my, myself to go beyond what is um, expected of me. Always doing everything with greatness, and it's not just in the big things, it's not just in the design and in the imagery. Focusing on the small things, I think, is um, what allows God to give you the big things. I think He honors that spirit of servanthood and He honors that spirit of doing things when no one's looking. And so I am um, very hard on myself when I allow myself to slip in neutral. I feel like the day was too easy and I don't like that feeling. There will be challenges day in and day out that are not really like superficial challenges but more so internal challenges. And you'll fail. And I've failed a lot 
quite a few times. It's okay to fail. My brother says failure is the best teacher. When you when you have a sense of personal destiny or, or you know the mission you're on or you know your goals or you know your purpose or your intention for living, I feel as though it shifts your perspective um, because you'll see every obstacle and challenge as just a part of the story to get you where you're going. It's like working out. You work out and you're like, dude, I'm still mushy or, or I don't have any muscles. After a year of going to the gym, you see, oh wow, I have like a little bicep. It's the same thing if you just every day wake up and you say today I'm gonna to be better today I'm gonna to be stronger and the challenges will keep coming and there'll be different challenges but every time you'll just get stronger and stronger of course we're supposed to be inspired by other people and we're supposed to be you know motivated by other people and other people's stories but at the end of the day the the inspiration and the drive has to come from the inside my brother he's a very brilliant and very wise young man and I know he's always joking around um, I'm very grateful for him. One second. Okay, I'm back. I was just saying, I always thought I was a super hard worker and I always have been. Um, I've always just had a drive to always, you know, whatever I did, I wanted it to represent me the best. And as I said before, I've failed a few times. I don't want to cry. Stop crying. I'm going to get pimples. I'm just so grateful because I've been able to grow alongside him. So it's really great to have him around I don't know if you believe in God or not but I always make my prayer God I want a life so big it crushes me I just want to do whatever I can to be of service I'm sorry for crying again I'm just very grateful for my brother I'm just grateful for you guys and for also supporting the Lime McKay and for watching and yes so I don't want to cry anymore I'll probably go to the gym and then tomorrow we'll answer some more questions Okay, all right, bye. What is that face? Look like a iguana. <laughs> We're going to the gym for a 30 minute sweaty shredder. Excuse me. <laughs> Get it going, boys. <laughs>